We saw this for the first time this morning. It's in addition to this black fence here behind me. It's taller than me. This wraps around the entire downtown area here. This is where construction crews were working when they hit that gas line. I just had to put them on. I, I had some sandals on yesterday and they just didn't do it. We walked probably about five miles. The damage out here is just unbelievable, guys. I'm standing on the slab of what used to be a house. You can see all four walls are now gone. And for the most part, everything in here has been thrown out. We're off Ted Williams Road in southwest Bear County, where the National Weather Service confirmed an EF2 tornado touched down here last night. This is actually the frame of what used to be the master bathroom, where several people rode out the storm. You can see behind me, cleanup crews are still working on this big project because there is so much work to do out here. It's a journey people make every day. A trip across the Mexican border. But there's a growing concern about the number of Americans not coming back. I walk the city, the park, you know, places where I think he was, and then I put, I leave it with his name and sign some money and a phone number. Maria Plemons, 30-year-old son Zane, has been missing for six months. I really pray to God that somebody who can hear me and know something about him will let me know something. Zane went to Mexico to catch a bus to see family, but he missed that bus. So his mom checked him into a hotel in Nuevo Laredo just a few blocks from the border. I told him be careful and then he said, mother, I'm gonna be okay overnight. You buy me the, the hotel where I'm gonna stay and then I'll be okay and tomorrow I will take the bus. As soon as I get there, I will call you. But that call never came. So this mom went back to Mexico to look for her son. The story she heard from a worker at Hotel Alameda still haunts her. She said that it was so kind of noise outside and he was curious because he used to work as a reporter. The hotel worker thought that noise was gunfire. She says Zane walked out the door with his camera and never came back. A few hours later in the morning, these two gunmen come over, all cover, and ask for the key and uh, take his stuff from the room. Everything was taken. Weeks after that conversation, the hotel shut down. It doesn't surprise me at all that if there was a shooting, that he would jump to grab his camera and take off and go film it. We've seen a high number of, of Mexican uh, media as well as American media targeted for being at the wrong place at the wrong time. The FBI is investigating the case but can't comment on specifics. Our jurisdiction begins when there's evidence of a crime, a forcible abduction, a ransom demand, a violent action with witnesses on the Mexican side. The FBI says its agents do cross the border, but they depend on their Mexican counterparts for cooperation. In recent years, their work has picked up. In 2007, the State Department says 35 Americans were murdered in Mexico. In 2011, that number grew to 120. It is quite different than the Nuevo Laredo, Mexico that all of us growing up on the border knew. Laredo police investigator Joe Baeza says the violence has not spilled over to the U.S. side recently, but he monitors closely what happens across the border. There's a fight between the Gulf Cartel and the Setas, and then the, to throw into boot the military. Zane's family says that violence is destroying their home country and Zane wanted everyone to see through the lens of his camera. Didn't matter what kind of danger he put himself in, he needed to let the world see what is going on, especially Americans, you know, what's going on right next door. Zane's bank accounts have not been touched. There's been no activity on his Facebook and no threatening phone calls to his family. You just have to keep hoping and knowing in your heart that they're not gone. They're somewhere and we can't forget about them. It's not happened to me, but it can happen to them too. To one of the kids, their wife, their mother. Somebody will be taken because they're taking people all the time. Zane's family says it's hard to believe he was taken from a border he crossed his whole life. Grace White, Fox News at 9. The goal behind this training is to teach anyone that they can learn the skills to survive a mass shooting like the one we saw in Connecticut. It can take hours of training, but the things you learn can make a difference. As soon as a bad situation happens is to, first of all, think about 
hitting the ground, assessing the situation, where the bad guy is, and then trying to get out of there and away from them as fast as possible. But if getting away is not an option, Michael Hansen can teach you how to take on the bad guys. They just want to kill. Hansen runs Elite Edge Training. He teaches a class called Active Shooter, where people like me with little self-defense training can learn how to think fast when seconds matter most. They're just going to be going around and they're just going to be firing wherever. Mm -hmm. And so when their arm is extended, you want to come up underneath the arm, like so, jam it up, mm -hmm. and then you come down into the eyes and then just push straight down like that. The training costs $30 and in about three hours, Hansen says you can learn how to survive a mass shooting scenario. He says after watching mass shootings happen in a movie theater and an elementary school, he decided to teach this class hoping more lives could be saved. Don't be scared. You may get shot, but more than likely it's you're going to be okay. If you don't act, that's probably when you're going to be killed. The active shooter course will be held this Saturday. We've put all the information on our website for you, foxsanantonio.com. Reporting in Lotus, Grace White, Fox News at 9. At Pope's Cleaners, everyone is family. It was my grandfather's, so we started in 1936. Including their staff. We, we treat our uh, employees like family. So when the store's security cameras captured a man walking in and pulling out a gun, it was the employees who made a difference. He stood here and he put the gun on, on me. And it was like, oh my God, you know, I, I got so scared and uh, asked uh, if his clothes were ready. One of our employees couldn't find his name in the computer system and after several attempts uh, he said, well ma'am, I'm here to rob you. What you can't see on the camera was the armed robber pushing the employees to the back of the store. They end up here in one of the back washrooms where their boss was sorting clothes. I told him, John, there's a man here. He has a gun. As that warning came from one employee, another stepped in to help. I just went towards him and I just pushed him. Rosa Pettis says it was instinct. We're like a family, you know. We, we take care of each other. As the boss held down the suspected robber, an employee took this picture while they waited for police to arrive. We're just very, very proud of all of them. And by coincidence, the store's security cameras were just installed the day before. My dad, 89, isn't able to get around, and so for entertainment, he wanted some security cameras. A simple request filled for a man who built a family business that even his employees are willing to defend. I'm proud and I love all my coworkers. I do. So it was just an experience. Police do have that suspect in custody tonight. He was taken to a local hospital for treatment and is expected to be charged with aggravated robbery. Grace White, Fox News at 9.